So it seems I'm live. Hi there. <sighs> well, I'm not sure if anyone's on right now, so I'm just going to start going. I hope you can hear me. I am outside, and there are some birds that are trying to compete with me. All right. I am Matthew Cagle. I am an author. I'm best known for my Western trilogy, The Adventures of Jeremiah Small, Frontier Technical Writer, and the mystery thriller, The High Priest of Mesa City. Um, but today, I am here to teach you to cut your own hair, which I've never done before. So it might go badly, but as an excuse, I am going to try alcohol hard alcohol for the first time. This is Tito's Vodka, um, which is for dog people and also is gluten-free. Um, so I know almost nothing about alcohol, um, but I know a screwdriver is easy, right? So it's just, it's just the vodka, right? And the, the orange juice and... I mean, the orange juice, I assume, hides the taste of the vodka. I, I don't mean that you are drinking something terrible. I mean, why just drink it anyway? Anyway, I'm going to teach you to cut your hair by yourself um, while trying alcohol for the first time. And... Um, telling the story of the worst haircut I ever got until now. So, <clears throat> let's get started. I bought a collection of Barber's Tools, which I believe makes me legally an official barber person. Let's see what it came with. Um, oh, hey, that's a good idea. I will... Put on this thing to keep the hair from getting anywhere. There's some rather impressive looking cutting equipment, which I will plug in. Ah! Oh, that was a comb. Eh, whatever. Um, scissors, always a good idea. The tiniest mirror, um, which I, I guess I can do this. I'm having a little trouble seeing what's popping up. A bunch of these things. I, I, I don't know what they do. Um, so, let's get started. Um, by the way, if you have a drink at home, feel free to drink along with me. Oh, God. It's like my face is on fire. What? Why do you drink this? This is revolting. Uh, I'm going to have to clean that off the ground later. Okay. Well, I made a promise, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. Okay. I mean, maybe it's not as bad as all that. All right. Anyway, this looks simple. So, um, let's get started. Yeah, maybe I'll get to that later. <sighs> okay. All right. All right. Okay. By the way, I have no idea if any of you out there can even see what I'm doing. So, uh, if not, I will record this for later. All right. So my wife wants me to do my sideburns because as you can see, I've been letting it grow out for a while and eh. All right. Okay. So the trick about sideburns is to get them oop, I'm working mirror, right? Right? Is to get them even. Yeah. Is that even? 
I can't even tell. Oh, oh I can see some of you. All right. I can't tell. It's really hard and bright out here. Um, right. I was going to tell the story of the worst haircut I ever got. Um, so this was back in, this was back in 96, late 96, early 97. I had, um, I had moved back to California from where I've been living, which was Wisconsin, with the woman who is now not my wife. Uh, and now maybe you can see why. Anyway, so she, I, back then, how come that never happens when I have a professional do my haircut? Um, so I moved back to California, and I didn't know what I was doing. Oh, sorry. Timer is telling me to drink again. I must be doing something wrong because this tastes... Yeah. This tastes really awful. Okay. <clears throat> so... I, back then... I use this proximity thing. So if I wanted to find something, right, I, we didn't really have much internet back then. So I would use what's called the Yellow Pages. For those of you who were born in the last 20 years, the Yellow Pages were like the internet, but on yellow paper. And what I found was easiest is I would just find the place closest to me. And it worked really well. I still use my tax preparer. Um, that's where I sent my kids to school, I think. I should probably check up on that. Um, and Illinois, where haircuts were part of, um, is part of the agriculture school at the University of Illinois. So... Uh, mm. So, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't all that, boy, this is hard to keep straight. To my hair person, I would like to apologize. This is really hard to keep straight. Oh, well, that looks better. Um, I've completely lost my place. I had a lot of bad haircuts, and... God, that's disgusting. I had a lot of bad haircuts and it didn't matter because if your hair comes all the way down to here and it sticks up, people think you're 10 years younger than you actually are. So, I mean, they're like, either you're one of the monkeys or you're, you're still in the 60s. Um, a lot of people thought I was one of the monkeys. Anyway, it's 1996. I'm living in the basement of somebody's house in Belmont and I find this place called the VIP Hair Salon. I think I should do my bangs next. Um, so the bangs are great because you just take you take the scissors. Sorry, I'm going to move back and forth between the windows. And I'm just going to cut them. You got to cut them straight across. Okay? Like that. Man, I am so bald. Okay, sorry. Um, you get them straight across as best you can, right? That's good. There we go. Um, my my hairstylist never has to wipe the hair off her laptop. And so I find this place called the VIP Hair Salon. And the VIP hair salon had this big square ad, and it was like massages and haircuts and manicures and pedicures. And I think this is a fancy, fancy salon. What would I know? How would I know the difference? Um, I'm going to go back to this thing um, because I think my bangs are okay. Um, and I mean, I make this, I call and I say, I want a haircut. And they were like, you you wanna 
haircut. And I was like, yeah, you do haircuts? And they went, okay. And I made an appointment. No, they're not straight. They're not straight. They gotta be straight. No, I think I missed. It's hard to do this in backwards. You should always be pay attention to what you're doing when you're doing that. Um, oh, you know what this set needs? This kit needs like a big brush, right? So there, I make an appointment. I go, okay, that's fine. And like 20, they call me back and they're like, you want it? A haircut? Oh, sorry. Timer says to drink. And ugh. and they say, and I said, yeah, I want a haircut. And they were like, okay, well, we can do that. Should have been a warning. Should have been a warning to me. So, um, oh, this looks cool. I wonder what this does. Okay. Oh, this was for bangs. I was using the wrong tool. All right. Does this have a battery? Oh, good. So this is a battery. So I'm running out of things to shave. So I'm going to get back here. So I get there. And the thing was, like, that doesn't do anything. I wonder what this does. I wonder if this is for, like, nose hairs. Oh, this is not the best haircut I've ever done. It's the only one I've ever done. Yeah, that doesn't do anything either. So, so the thing is, I get there and it's got a barber's station. And you, know, you have this long that um, that kind of you have this long line of stations where they all sit at with mirrors. But there were boxes and all the chairs instead of like um, what do you call it? people. There should be people instead of boxes. And um, so I go there, and, uh, and that should have been a warning. Um, and then out came this woman, a lot of gold, shimmering green dress, which I guess you don't do if you're a stylist, because then you get hair everywhere. And, and, um, and she's like, are you here for a massage? And I was like, uh, no. No, I was here for a haircut. And um, they were like, oh, you're, you're here for a haircut. And she has me sit down. Um, and she has me sit down and like, oh, that's not supposed to be on. All right. All right. Sorry. Um, she has me sit down and like, um, and she says, uh, the, the barber will be here. So they got at least one barber. And so I'm sitting there waiting. And there's her. And there's this other woman. Eastern European accent, I think. And, um. A man comes in. And this woman said, like. The, the woman in the red dress is like, oh, would you like a massage? And he says, yes. And she says, I can just take you in the back. And he goes, can I see who else is available? Which should have been another warning. Um, sorry, drink time. If you haven't finished your drink yet, you might want to, because I think I need another one. I don't know why I'm drinking this. Anyway. Oh, somebody named E wants me to get a mullet. I don't know. Oh, that's not good. I have to try to even this out. I I know I'm screwing something up here. All right, so um, let's make that even on the other side. Uh, anyway, the Eastern European woman, or the woman with the Eastern European accent, you know, I probably can't can't be sure. Oh, a lot of this is gray. Shoot. Anyway, this woman, um, I'm in the back, and fine barber appears. And the barber is like, the barber, like, comes in with tools. 
she's got like a big leather bag and she's like oh hi and she's like very professional sticks the boxes off the chairs and and she takes the box off the chair and she's like how long would you like it did you have anything in mind and um you know i make the usual joke i want a haircut that makes men fear me and women love me but you know uh she does it and while she's cutting my hair this woman who had the client comes back in and reaches into one of the barber stations and says um she doesn't say anything excuse me she goes to one of the barber stations pulls out a drawer and takes out a conspicuous um square foil wrapped package it gets big and really flat and it finally all hits me it was a condom i'm having my hair cut at a house of prostitution i'm not sure what the term is they were sex workers and the reason they were so surprised that anyone wanted to come and have a haircut there is because that was just their cover for what they were really doing. So I get my hair finished cutting and, you know, <sighs> um, I get my hair cutting and as I'm leaving, um, the woman in red, who I now assume was like, the woman in charge um, says, oh, thank you for coming. And we'd give massages. And I was like, I, I, I believe I answered like 16 octaves higher. I know. Um, anyway, I suppose I should get this side too. Um, so that is the story of the worst haircut I ever got. Um, from then on, I went and only got haircutting places where I could get my hair cut for $20 or less. Or after I met the woman who is now my wife, who doesn't know I'm doing this, by the way. Um, oh, I'm out of drink. Sorry, the timer went off and I didn't get another drink. Boy, I got hair in here. All right, sorry. It's time for another hair off the dog that bit me. Um, you know, it occurs to me, I don't actually know what the proportions of this is, um, is, is. Okay, so I really can't see what I'm doing here. I'm assuming you're going to tell me if something is going on that I'm doing wrong. Um, I think it's a little off. Um, wow, that's a lot off. Okay, sorry. So... From then on, my wife slowly made me go to better and better haircuts. And, ooh, it's backwards. Um, but they were expensive, you know? And so I thought, first I thought it was a terrible idea to get hair, expensive haircuts. Because let's face it, how do you improve on perfection? And then I kind kind of embraced it. Current hair person, Helen, if you're there, hi, um, suggested I start because that's what she was good at. Um, I went, okay, I'll do it. And one year, oh, hi, Helen. You need to put the clipper down. That seems weird. does amazing color and one year on my 40th birthday I said I'm gonna do blue and she was like okay and it was great everyone like in all of my city were like um hey you're that guy with the blue hair and and so the next year when I was like ah I did that I'm gonna go skydiving instead there's another story I should probably be doing when I'm not drinking. That is disgusting. Um, I had started doing my hair different colors. So every year on my birthday, I picked a different color. And so I did yellow, and I did orange, 
green, blue, catching a theme here. It's like all the colors of the rainbow, at least as as skipping indigo, because it turns out indigo they just threw in there. Um, and then uh, I did black, and I did white, and at the suggestion of my stylist, I did sort of an opalescent silver, and one point to show me how fast she could do it. She did five colors in my hair in five minutes, which was amazing. And there was just one color I never did, and that was clear. And people would always say, what's clear? Well, clear, oh, this side, I forgot this side. Clear is when you take all your hair off, like all of it. And people went, oh, you're nuts. Nobody would cut all their hair off. That's just crazy. And the amount of pushback I got from people. Oh, sorry. Time to drink again. The amount of pushback I got from people saying how awful it was and how they would, how upsetting it would be um, was remarkable. And so I said, what if I don't? What if I, um, what if I, instead of cutting my hair off, they were like, what if you just cut it really, really short? And like it's not the same. I want like, like I expected that when I got out of college, I would like go bald, cause like Stephen King had a story where somebody went bald, and like I forgot what I was saying. Oh, so I thought oh, I would get to totally bald. I didn't, and so I have to do it myself. Where am I missing? I kind of look like, I kind of look like I could do a comb over now. Oh, there's new messages. No purple. Oh, I did do purple. Yes, I did do purple. And if anyone wants, I can send you pictures of all of my rainbow hairs. But this year, in a few days, I'm going to turn 50. And that's going to be it for me. Because I've done all the colors. And there doesn't need to be any more. Oh, it's not giving me a high shine I was hoping to get. I do look kind of like, kind of like Bruce Willis. I look like Bruce Willis, but maybe a little more handsome. Anyway. Oh, the final step, as my hairstylist always says, is to look at the back. And she says, what do you think? And I go, yes, that's the back of my head. So, my name is Matthew Cagle, and this is how to cut your hair under the influence of alcohol, and um, I have no idea what just happened. Bye.